Hey guys, welcome back. This video, I wanted to talk about more on the for loop. So we introduced it in the previous videos, we talked about how to code it, and we made this nice pretty for loop. But the reality is, this is not the structure of the for loop you're always going to find in the wild. So I just wanted to help you understand for loops at a more deep level, and hopefully that'll help you write them better as well as understand them better. So the first thing I want to do is I just wanted to run this program so you guys can see what the output is. Okay, so it takes an input, and let's say we say 10. It prints out 10 numbers from zero to nine. And what I wanna do is I want to append to this program and basically say, hey, you printed blank numbers, and then use the i variable to say how many numbers were printed. So to do something like that, it's going to look like this. So you print it up to the number D. And you can see that, you know, we're printing the value of I and it goes up to nine. So in theory, this should make sense, but we're gonna find some issues with this. And the, the variable we're gonna use, we are going to use I. And I can tell you right now that this is not going to compile. And the reason this is not compiling is because we are referencing this variable I. And this has to do with uh, variable scope but we're declaring this variable inside of this for loop. So once the, the end of this for loop is hit and we go outside of it, all of the variables declared up here and inside of the body, they all disappear and they're no longer able to be referenced. Thus, in order to fix this, we must declare i outside of the for loop. So we could do something like this, int i, and get rid of the declaration inside of here. You could also say int i equals zero, and then just get rid of this altogether. But personally, I don't think that's quite as clear. I like it like this, um, because to me, it makes it clear, you know, what we're doing. We're starting i from zero, and we're, we're going to max. So definitely clearer in my opinion. Now let's try compiling. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it's waiting for me. <laughs> oh boy, it's been a long day. 10, okay, so it counts from zero to nine, and then it says you printed up to the number 10. So why is it printing 10? Well, just so you guys understand that the the update happens after the the body. Thus, at the last on the last iteration, it prints nine, and then i is incremented to 10. So at this point, i is 10, not nine. So if you want to reference the, the last value of i with the for loop, you need to make sure you're doing i minus one. That's the first thing I wanted to show you guys. Pretty simple and not nothing too crazy, but just wanted to, to make, make it clear. You print it up to the number nine. Now, if you're trying to print the total of number of things printed, that's different. So you could say you printed percent %d numbers. In this situation, we don't want to use the minus 1 because it will actually have the right value. You printed 10 numbers. Perfect. So that is the first thing I wanted to show you. The other thing is that this for loop increments. It doesn't have to work this way. We can actually flip it around in decrement, so count down. So what is that gonna look like? Here, let me just get rid of this. So we're going to basically, let's first look at the comparison because I like to think of, you know, when are we gonna stop? So as long as i is greater than, uh, let's say zero. And instead of using i, let's say the max. So we're going to, we're going to start with the max and then we're going to decrement the max. And this comes from input. So the person passes in a max, and as long as it's greater than zero, we're going to decrement that value. Let's compile this and run it. And obviously we did something terribly wrong. And why? It's because we're printing i, which <laughs> is not what we're trying to do here. 
And in fact, I was never initialized, which is why we're getting some random value. We're just declaring it. Thus, there's no prediction on what is actually going to show up here. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to print max. And you could use a variable i just the same. I just, I already had a variable max, so it, it was easier for me to, uh, to read. Let me get out of that. Ah. Compile. Now let's try 10. And it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that is how you could count down. Another thing you could try doing is, and we don't need this i variable anymore, you could count down by two. So for example, instead of decrementing, you could say max equals max minus two. Now it goes 10, eight, six, four, two. Awesome. If you wanted to include zero, you could put that equal sign there. And there you go, include zero. So another thing I wanted to warn you guys of is infinite loops. They're actually very easy to do. And uh, it usually just comes down to you don't really think about all the possible inputs because naturally we're human. We only think about the things we're thinking about, but we don't think the same way as everybody else. So when someone else uses our program, they think things differently and they put in a different input. So for example, you might look at this and say, wow, this is counting all the even numbers. It's counting counting down by two. Thus, instead of instead of naturally thinking this, we might just say, hey, as long as max is not equal to zero, we should be good. And once it hits zero, it's going to stop. Let's run it. Put in the value 10. Yep, works perfectly. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Exactly what we want. And then what we might do is we might ship this application to millions of users and say that it's production ready. But we don't, what we don't think about <laughs> is that, you know, they might not put in an even number. If you put in the value 11, it's going to subtract two and it's going to skip the value zero and it's going to continue get to, it's going to continue to get less and less and less into the negatives and it's just going to keep doing that forever. Obviously that is a, a, a big bug and it's going to not let you proceed with your application. So let's just try that. Let's just run it. Let's put in 11. And now it's basically just counting down forever. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of cool if you think about it. Kind of makes you look like you're like a, a super hacker. You know, you're just like just type on your keyboard like as if you know what you're doing, but <laughs> you really don't. So if you want to get out of this, you can hold the control key and press C. That's what I have to type on my Mac. If you're on Windows or something, it might be a little bit different. I'm not entirely sure, honestly. So if you're in that scenario and you can't get out of it, I'm sorry. 